Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Suspense need not always be a matter of murder. There can be romance in the suspense of whether boy gets girl. And there can be fun in the suspense of how on earth can girl get rid of boy. There's a little of each in the upcoming story. There's murder, too, if you agree that the emotional starvation of a wife can lead to the murder of a marriage. There's the boy gets girl angle, but which boy, you will never guess until the end. And there is, we feel, a lot of good, clean, bloodless fun. Listen. Listen, then, as Victor Jory stars in Old Army Buddy, which begins in exactly one minute. And now... Old Army Buddy, starring Mr. Victor Jory. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Funny thing how long it takes people to spot a phony. I'll give you an example. Frederick Carlton Haskell, foreign correspondent, author, newscaster, and lion of the lecture halls. You read his dispatches from the York. The Prime Minister assured me today during a two-hour chat at the Foreign Office that no further concessions could be expected until the present attitude of the pressure powers has... You've been heard confused. his pear-shaped tones on your radio. I do not think it is too much to expect that the campaign will result in some astounding and radical changes... By the time the final tally is made next November. Have you any idea what he's saying? But then what difference does it make? When Frederick Carlton Haskell carelessly tosses his British trench coat over his Harris tweeds, he's America's ideal of the perfect foreign correspondent. Middle-aged ladies mob him at Middle Western lectures and book clubs plead for the privilege of publishing his pronouncements. Yes, he cuts quite a figure in public, does Frederick Carlton Haskell. In private, well, that's another matter. Those of us who, for one reason or another, have been close to him for enough years have seen through him for a long, long time. I, for one, and his lovely wife, Anne, for another. In the Shadow of the Kremlin by Frederick Carlton Haskell. Dedication. To my wife, without whose steadfast devotion, inspiring confidence and daily concern, these pages could not have been written. <clears throat> Preface. Fred. At the outset... I wish to make it clear that during... Fred, the... I want to talk to you. Later, Anne, I've just started to dictate my new book. Which... Fred, what I've got to say is more important than the new book. Nothing is more important, Anne. <clears throat> I am therefore the man best qualified to bring you a complete and unbiased report of the conditions today in the shadow of the Kremlin. What took so long, Fred? Uh -huh. We spent only six days in Paris for in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. In the shadow of Big Ben took only three days in London. Well, the uh, <clears throat> uh, Soviet picture is uh, vastly more complicated. I uh, had to give it at least ten days. When did your plane get in? 4.30 this morning. Visible trip, headwinds all the way, made all the stops. Shannon, Iceland, Gander. Why didn't you let me know when you got home? No sense of waking you up at six o'clock in the morning. And anyway, I wanted to get started on this piece while the impressions were still fresh in my mind. I've got a deadline to meet. Oh, you know? well, I know. I have to keep going, you know. Stand still and you start going backward. And... Well, you've got to stand still for this, Fred. I want a divorce. You want... Uh, you must be kidding. No, Fred. I've been thinking about it for a long time. And while you were away this last trip, I made up my mind. I just want out. But why? You've got everything a woman could ask for. You're young and beautiful. The wife of a famous man. Why, you're the envy of every woman in America. What more do you want? A divorce. Impossible. I don't want to be ugly about it, but I will be if you force me to. You, you have no grounds for a divorce. Oh, yes, I have. What? Infidelity. Absurd. I've never looked at another woman since I first met you. Nevertheless, you're not in love with me. You're in love with someone else. Who? Yourself. Anne, that comes close to being an insult. It's the truth. In your opinion. Certainly no judge would concur. No, Anne, it's out of the question. I will not disillusion the American people. They believe in me, and so they believe in you and in our marriage. In a way, we are a symbol... Oh, rubbish. Why do you always have to create some kind of unpleasantness just when I'm in the middle of a job that requires all of my faculties? It's most inconsiderate, Anne. Really inconsiderate, I'm Anne. sorry if it's inconvenient, inconsiderate, and unpleasant. 
But I want a divorce. Anne, you're trying my patience. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really must get on with the book. I'm facing a deadline, you know. Too bad you refuse to face facts. Had the reader been so fortunate as to stand in the shoes of this reporter on the Red Square two weeks ago, he would have realized the tremendous forces which have been unleashed. The second act of Suspense continues in one minute. And now, we continue with act two of Old Army Buddy, starring Victor Jory. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. I learned of this newest development in the career of Frederick Carlton Haskell the same afternoon in the tap room of the press club. The usual regulars were at the bar. The conversation was pleasant, aimless, mostly shop talk. And then the great man made his entrance like Prince Philip inspecting a cattle show. Well, boys, it certainly is good to be back home again. Uh, No matter what they say, there's no country like the good old USA. You been away? That's right. Moscow this time, and boys, I'm here to tell you the... So what else is new? Well, if you don't want to hear what is interesting... The conversation began again, and the great Frederick Carlton Haskell stood there with egg on his face, and the backs of his colleagues turned toward him. Then he saw me. Jerry, my old army buddy, am I glad to see you. Hello, Fred. Has he been to Moscow, huh? Affirmative. Just got in this morning, and I've already finished two chapters of the book. You don't waste any time, do you? Can't afford to. Got to keep going. Can't stop. Yeah, I know. Stand still. You start going backwards. Uh... Yeah, that's about the size of it. Jerry, tell me something. What's huh? the matter with those guys? Don't they want to know what's going on in the world? I'm jealous, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's it. Contemptuous would have been a better word. There wasn't a man at the bar whose toes hadn't been trampled by Frederick Carlton Haskell as he shouldered his way to the head of the line, including me. I had every bit as much reason as the others for hating Haskell's guts. But I also had a much bigger reason for being his old army buddy. Now, you are my friend, aren't you, Jerry? Well, I hope so. Well, something's come up, and I feel you're the only one I can discuss it with. I'm flattered. Let's uh, go to that table in the corner. Oh, okay. Well, I wouldn't want any of those big ears of the bar to hear this one. No. All right, Fred, what's in your mind? Jerry, I'm worried about Anne. Why? She's sick? I'm afraid so, Jerry. Very sick. Mentally sick. What makes you think so? She wants to divorce me. No, why? I ask you, why? Haven't I given her everything? Clothes, furs, jewelry, a beautiful apartment. You certainly have, pal. I wouldn't have to be crazy to want to throw these things over. Well, it depends on who she's throwing them over for, though. What do you mean? Who's the other man? There's no other man. How do you know? Did you ask her? No, it never occurred to me, but how could she possibly be interested in any other man? I don't know. Women sometimes do the darndest thing. Hey, let me ask you something, Fred. Why? Do you love Anne? What's that got to do Did with you it? you ever love her? Oh, look, old army buddy, let's not confuse the issue. The trouble with women is they expect the honeymoon to go on forever. A man's got work to do. Hand holding in the moonlight just doesn't buy any square-cut diamonds, you know? Hand in the moonlight is a lot warmer. What do you mean? Uh, never mind. What are you going to do about this? I'm going to take her to the best psychiatrist in town, no matter how much it costs. The poor girl needs help. Well, that she does. Meantime, Jerry... Not a word about this to anyone. Of course not. Thanks, old army buddy. Thanks a lot. Is that you, Fred? Yes, Anne? Will you be home for dinner? Yes, but I'll have to work. Just have Stella bring me a tray in the study. All right. However, before I get back to the desk, yes? I, uh... I've been thinking about our conversation this morning, and I've come to some conclusions. Yes, Fred? I've made an appointment for you tomorrow with Dr. Zlotny. The psychiatrist? Best man in New York. Oh. <laughs> what, what, what's so funny? Oh, your, your conclusion. You think I'm crazy. Well, now, hardly that. Let's, um, <laughs> let's just say that you're disturbed. Your, your, your sense of values is out of adjustment. I'm sure you won't require a very long analysis. But believe me, Anne, you do need help. Fred, all I need is a divorce. Now, you see? You see? You just don't make any sense. Just like that, you want a divorce. Now, if there was another man, I could understand... Oh, but there is. There is? Yes. You didn't tell me? You didn't ask me. Who is this cad? 
A man? Oh, man. Well, we'll see if he's a man. You get him on the phone now. You, you tell him to come over here right now. Oh, no. No, that'll throw me behind in my schedule. Make it tomorrow. Tell him to be here tomorrow at 6. Hello? Hello, Jerry. This is your old army buddy. Oh, hello, Fred. Well, uh, pal, you were right. About what? And there is another man. Who is it? She refused to tell me. But I have ordered her to have him here tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. You think that's wise, Fred? Of course it's wise. When she sees the two of us together in the same room, what chance will the poor idiot have? He's probably some crew-cut Madison Avenue type or a, a Hollywood actor with long eyelashes. I'm not afraid of competition, Jerry. Never was. I'll make an idiot out of the idiot. This I'd like to see. Well, come on over then. It's all in the family, and you're part of the family, old army buddy. Act three of Suspense follows in one minute. And now, we continue with Act Three of Old Army Buddy, starring Victor Jory. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. The following evening, I witnessed the historic meeting between the great Frederick Carlton Haskell and the man who had stolen his wife's love. Whatever Freddie was expecting, it certainly wasn't this. A tall Texan going to fat, his sparse hair plastered across his bald pate, his hands as big as hams, his face as flat as Pecos County. The letters J-E-B were stitched in red on the sides of his expensive black cowboy boots. He flung his ten-gallon hat onto a chair, and he roared into the room like a prairie tornado, his great paw extended to Haskell. Tolliver's the name, J. Stewart Tolliver. Most folks call me Jeb, after Jeb Stewart. Yeah, my grandpappy served with old Jeb when he whomped you Yankees at Chancellorsville. That's how I come by the name. Didn't catch yours, friend. Frederick Carlton Haskell. Oh, you must be Annie Pooh's husband. I am. Well, I got to congratulate you, Freddie. That's quite a little lady you have there. Quite a piece of work. Well. And, Jeb, dear, this is our friend, Mr. Davis. Well, glad to meet you, Mr. Tolliver. Oh, call me Jeb, son. Folks all call me Jeb. What's your handle, Mr. Davis? Jeb? Uh, no, uh, Jerry. Oh, with a last name like Davis, the first name's got to be Jefferson. I'm sorry. Well, no matter. Time folks forgot the trouble between the states. Would do if you Yankees wasn't always bringing it up. Yeah, Annie Pooh's sugar? Yes, Jeb. I'm as dry as the Rio Grande in fly time. You got something well, I can Well, you wait, have, uh... darling. Say, how about just a little drinking whiskey and branch water? Jerry? I'll have scotch and soda. Fred. I don't feel like anything right now. Thank you. Well, now, let's all set a spell and get down to business. What say? Well, I guess Annie Shugs told you I'm fixing to marry up with her as soon as she's divorced. Uh... She told me. Good. Then it's all settled. Nothing settled, Mr. Tolliver. Oh, just call me Jeb, Freddy. I said, Mr. Tolliver, nothing settled. Well, now, ain't that a crying shame? Maybe you don't understand how unhappy this little lady is, Freddy. And when little old Annie Pooh is unhappy, I'm unhappy. And when I'm unhappy, I sometimes get ornery. You wouldn't want me to get ornery, now, would you, Freddy? Are you threatening me? Well, now, you just interpret my remarks any way you like to, son. I see no reason. Boys, let's keep our tempers. Jeb, darling, your drink. Oh, thank you. You didn't put too much branch water in it, did you, Mumsy Pickle? Just as you like it, darling. Yeah. Jerry? Thanks, Sam. Sure you won't have a drink, Fred? No, thank you. I suddenly don't feel very well. What's the matter, Fred? Nausea, dear. Acute nausea. I need some fresh air now. I'll go with you, Fred. No need. It's me that's sick. Think you're the only one? Come on. Let's go back to the club. Well, Freddy, son, we ain't settled nothing yet, including your stomach. Monstrous. There's no other word for it. Want to walk, or should we take a cab? Walk, 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 walk it off. Think it out. Okay. After all I've done for her, all I've given her, there can only be one explanation. She must be out of her mind, mad, stark, raving mad. Could be. She should be committed to an institution. Oh, 
you think that'd be going a little too far? Why? Obviously, she's taken leave of her senses. Still, it wouldn't look too good for you, since you'd be the one who'd have to commit her. Uh, yes, I, I see what you mean. There uh, is another way to handle this, of course. What's that? Just give her the divorce. And make myself a laughing stock from coast to coast? On the contrary, make her the laughing stock. I... I don't follow you. Look, Fred, if she'd fallen for a good-looking guy younger than you, if she'd lost her head to a movie actress, say, or to another newsman like Worthington Davenport... Heaven forbid. Exactly. Then you would be a laughingstock. But she's gone goofy over a clown, an ignoramus. Uh-huh. When that story gets around, everybody will think she's crazy. Everybody will say that she's an ingrate, mm. unworthy of the position you've tried to give her. Yes. Yes, I see what you mean. You just leave it to me, pal. I'll see that the story gets around. Jerry, old army buddy, you're a real friend. It's a privilege and an honor. Let's go back and get it over with right now. I'm with you all the way, old army buddy. Why, Fred, I thought that you'd go... Got you, Freddy boy? Got your stomach settled yet? Now, you just take a glass of this drinking whiskey. She'll be settled for good. She's settled for good, Mr. Tolliver. Oh, shucks, Freddy. When are you going to start calling me Jeb? Folks all do. Mr. Tolliver, I have decided to give Anne the divorce. Oh, Fred, I could almost kiss you. That won't be necessary, dear. Now, that's the best news I heard since Yellow Rose number three come in in the gushy. Now, you come on over here and snuggle up to Pappy, sweet me. Please spare me the prenuptial spectacle. There are a couple of details to be gone over, and then I'll be on my way. Where are you going? It has occurred to me that I might effectively expand the scope of my new book by including a definitive evaluation of the Iron Curtain countries. I shall be away at least six weeks, during which time I assume you will be residing in Reno. You're so thoughtful sometimes, Naturally, under the circumstances, Anne, you wouldn't expect any alimony or... Property settlement. Naturally. Shucks, Freddy. Don't you fret about money. I'm taking care of little old Annie Poo from here on down the trail. Well, I guess that covers everything. There's a plane out of Idlewild for Warsaw in uh, uh, an hour and a half. I can just make it. But you've got to pack. I'll pick up the bag I keep at the club for emergencies. Well, goodbye, Anne. Goodbye, Fred. And thanks. There's nothing to thank me for. You brought this on yourself. Now, mind, Freddy. You ever get down wake away, you be sure to drop in on little old sugar pie and me. That's very doubtful, Mr. Tolliver. My work concerns itself only with the more civilized parts of the world. Hmm. You coming, Jerry? Uh, not yet, Fred. I feel badly in need of a drink. Very well. Thanks for everything, old army buddy. And you'll follow through, won't you? You can count on me, pal. I'd like to leave you with this parting thought. I have witnessed the destruction of war, the internecine strife of revolution, the fall of governments, and the miscarriage of justice in a score of countries from Tierra del Fuego to Spitsbergen. But never have I seen a more tragic and irreparable error than has been committed in this room this evening. Well. I'll be horn swoggled. I'll rope me for a longhorn maverick. Just what in the world did all them <laughs> big words mean? <laughs> oh, you were wonderful, Harry. Oh, boy. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> it was your greatest performance. Well, how could I help it? Look at my audience. <laughs> oh, come here, darling. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, at last. Hmm. <clears throat> I, uh... Hate to change the subject, friends, but west of Rimrock goes on over Channel 14 in less than an hour, and the sponsor isn't going to like it if old Sheriff Saul is late. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Harry. I forgot all about you. That figures. Uh, how much do I owe you? Well, actor's equity doesn't cover this kind of a performance. Well, how about a hundred bucks? Should be sufficiently over scale. <laughs> Here you are. I'd make it a thousand if I could. It was worth it. Oh, thanks a lot, Jerry. Well... I got to be moseying along now, ma'am, but before I go, I want to wish you and your young feller as much happiness as old paint and I have known together. <laughs> and if you ever get down, wake away like I oh. <laughs> So long, kids. <laughs> so long, Harry. Uh, oh, darling, darling. Oh, my dearest. Darling. Hmm? 
Is there a plane for Reno tonight? Dozens of them. So who wants to hurry? Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> 